Hello, how are you? My name is Ruth. Um, welcome to my channel. I'm delighted to have you. Um, today I am going to be doing an empties post. So this will be my first an empties post. It goes back to my blog days. Uh, an empties video. And this will be my first one. Hopefully I'll do one once a month. Um, but yeah, that's what today's video is going to be. How are you all doing? Um, I don't know about you, but I've struggled this last month. Definitely last week in particular, I just had a really bad mental health week. I just, I really struggled and kind of, this morning I had to really force myself to get up, have a shower, do my makeup, kind of make myself feel a bit better and kind of force myself to do a few bits because if I don't, I could really slide down deeper and deeper. So. I really felt today I had to pick myself up and, and get up and get on with it. Um, I think a big part of it is I finished up my steroids. I was on 12 steroids a day for over a month um, and I finished them at the end or at the start of last week. And I know that can really affect your mood and affect your, your if you suffer from depression, kind of heighten it and things like that. So, um, yeah, hopefully this week is going to be a better week. So I'm just going to try and every day just make myself do a few bits more, kind of do bits around the house, do a bit of exercise, do my makeup, things that kind of make me feel a little bit better. Listen to some music, read a book, things like that. But anyway, let me know how you're doing. I know it's a tough time for everyone. Everyone is struggling at the moment. Um, but yeah, what do you do to make yourself feel a bit better? If you feel yourself kind of sliding down a little bit, how do you pick yourself up again? I'd love to know because, you know, I have my own kind of things that I apply and use, but I'm always keen to know what other people are doing to make themselves feel that bit better um, and try and get through this tough time that we're all going through at the moment. But anyway, on with my empties post. So the first thing I have here, I'm just literally going to pick them up and as I go, show them to you. So these are the Epsom salts. Um, these are eucalyptus. So these ones I tend to use. I have a little foot spa that I use, especially if I'm working. Because uh, my feet, I'm on my feet all day. So I always find that eucalyptus, anything minty kind of helps my feet. Uh, just feel, you know, take down the, the heat and the kind of soreness a little bit. And um, I just find eucalyptus helps with that. I have these in lavender as well and I use them in the bath. But I like the Epsom salts in the, in the, the eucalyptus ones in the foot spa. So that's them. Um, I get them fairly cheap as well. I think they're like two for four ninety nine where I work, so it's fantastic. I just pick up a eucalyptus and lavender one when I run low, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy them. Um, this is the La Cura Beauty or Booty Bar. So this obviously is supposed to be um, a dupe for the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Cream. It's not. Um, smell. It, it's actually quite a nice smell. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a a deep fruity smell if that makes sense so not a, a, a really sweet fruity smell but more there's more depth to it um but it just doesn't go on the skin the same at all i mean the bum bum cream just soaks in and it leaves a little bit of a glisten on the skin and the scent will stay in your jammies for ages and i, I love the bum bum cream i'm so sad that it's not cruelty free because i would definitely even though it's expensive it's something that it would be one of those treat products that and you're feeling, you know, like I am at the moment, feeling a bit down. You just go, oh, I'm going to put that on. I'm going to feel lovely. So I'm sad that it's not cruelty free. But anyway, um, I, La Cura is a range. So um, Katie said in one of my videos that she didn't know what Little was. So apparently you don't have Little in the US. So you have Aldi. And it's the same thing, really. Um, Little and Aldi were started by two brothers. And um, it, they're German-based stores. And we have both of them here, both Little and Aldi. And they're very similar. Uh, but they each have their own home kind of house ranges and the Cura, I believe Liqueur is the Aldi range and C-N-C-I-E-N, the shampoo that I have in my Team Project pan is the uh, Little range. So yeah, this, look at it, was fine, but it left that kind of silicony feel on your skin, if you know what I mean, where you just, I don't know, it just doesn't sink into the skin. I wouldn't be bothered, I mean it was cheap, I think it was only like five or six euros with grana extract and coconut oil. Yeah, um, I just, I don't feel it sank, to, sank into the skin nicely enough, so I wouldn't even pay the six or seven euros that it was again because I just didn't enjoy it enough. Um, I don't normally, wouldn't normally think of putting vitamins in, but I did want to mention these. These are vitamin D3. So the reason I kind of mentioned these is my GP uh, did recommend that I take uh, vitamin D3 for my immune system because of being on the steroids and just my health in general, um, my immune system is rock bottom at the moment. And she said the vitamin D3 definitely helps to boost your immune system, but to get the higher strength. So these are the 
2000 IU, which I think is jewels, maybe. I'm not sure if you, if you know what that means, tell me. Um, but yeah, so I've went through a higher strength of them and I've gone on to another pack now. Um, but yeah, I just feel like anything that will help me boost my immune system, I'm going to take. Um, this is a sheet mask. Now, typically I don't purchase sheet masks anymore because um, the material that they're made out of is as bad as what face wipes are made out of for the environment. It's basically there's plastic in it and they take hundreds of years to break down so um but this was bought for me as a gift over christmas it was a pack of 10 i love i do love wearing a sheet mask i love just lying back on the bed throwing on a couple of youtube videos putting on a sheet mask and just doing nothing for 15 20 minutes that it takes for this to you know just sink into your skin now i believe i know caroline harns has said that i mean you could get any really type of serum or or you know essence or whatever lash loads of it on your face and put a muslin cloth over it, cut some eye holes and mouth holes and it does the exact same thing so maybe that's something i look into because i do enjoy it i know some people don't like face masks that make them stop and do nothing but i actually love that part of it that makes them just stop do nothing sit back and relax and um, so i enjoyed that element of it but yeah i have a I have another i think nine of them to go so i'll be using them up and the snail essence thing as well i thought that would kind of ick me out a little bit but it actually doesn't it's actually really nice on the skin and my skin um definitely any redness kind of went down and it did feel plump and hydrated definitely so i did enjoy it not the plump and hydrating doesn't last like it's not like it's going to last a week or something it's only for a few hours but it's it's nice i liked it i enjoyed it Oh, this product, my Elizabeth Arden um, eight hour cream. I adore this and I'm devastated because it's not cruelty free and I can't purchase it again. I've yet to find something that is as effective on my lips as this is. I never get dry, sore, cracked lips when I use this at night. Um, I've also used it um, on occasion when we've been on holidays of either myself or my hobby for some reason got a little bit sunburnt. I hate when I do, but you know, sometimes it happens. And if you put this on at night over the area, um, it just takes all the heat out of it. It brings down the redness. It stops any peeling or anything like that because it just totally hydrates the skin. I believe the SAS use it, you know, when they're in really extreme conditions. Um, but yeah, this has lasted, I'd say two, maybe even three years. And I just, I'm heartbroken that it's gone. I suppose every last bit out of it. And, um, yeah, if you know of something that's as good as this, that's cruelty free, please let me know because I have to find something to replace it. Um, chances of Elizabeth Arden going cruelty free are probably slim and none, unfortunately. Uh, next up, we have a shampoo. So this is um, the Herbal Essence um, Shampoo Dazzling Shine. Did not notice any shine. Smells divine. Absolutely adore the smell. Anything with lime in it, I'm, I'm a big fan of. I love those kind of scents. Um, it's paraben, silicone, gluten, and paraffin free, apparently. Um, sorry, no, I'm just reading here. Yeah, it's definitely not cruelty free. I was trying to check to see. It says this shampoo is made in a factory that matches electricity with renewable wind credits. That's wonderful. And why can't it be cruelty free then on top of that? I don't understand. But anyway, um, I wouldn't report it anyway, which is weather. Um, I ended up giving it to my husband because he literally threw anything in his hair. So he's happy out. Um, but yeah, I definitely didn't notice any dazzling shine whatsoever when using this. If anything, I noticed that my hair, my scalp got very dry with it actually. So I wasn't a fan of that. Wouldn't repurchase. This is one of my all time favorite uh, facial mists. I love a facial mist. Um, since I started using them maybe three years ago, I just adore them and I've tried loads of different ones, but this one time and time and time, time and time again, I come back to this one. This is the Pixie Hydrating Milky Mist with Hyaluronic Acid and Oat, oh just an Oat, thought it was something else, was in, uh, the French of it. Um, I love this. Now sometimes with Pixie, their uh, spray bottle can be hit and miss. So I actually will always keep on to, if I have a good spray bottle, I will keep on to it until I purchase my next one and make sure the spray is good before I dump it. I'll also use these bottles, sometimes the spray bottles, either to make up a room spray with like an essential oil and some water kind of mixed in, um, or like a fly spray, you know, with the um, the different kind of, um, I think is a tea tree, 
lemongrass, citronella, those kind of oils. Um, I'll mix it in here at the summertime to try and help with flies and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I love this. I love the scent of it. I love how it feels on the skin. I love how calming it is. I love how cooling it is. I just love everything about it. I've tried loads of the other pixie ones. I've tried the glow mist, the vitamin mist. The, I didn't try the rose because I, I hate the scent of rose. Uh, but this is the one that I come back to every time. I adore it. I already have repurchased in the jumbo size. And um, I'm using up a different one at the moment. But I can't wait to get back to it. This is one of those products that I get angsty when it's emptying out and when it's getting low. And if I don't have a backup, I'm just like, oh my God, I need to get one. So I'll always kind of keep an eye out for anyone that's doing... 20-30% off sales or anything like that and I'll always see if they have one of these on it and pick one up because it's just one of those products that I adore and I love and I'm happy to pay the money to have it back in my collection again and it's cruelty free which of course yay. Uh, Sanctuary Hand Spa. Uh, Sanctuary products are products that I, I love the scent of. They're a very, I want to say sensual smell maybe or I don't know it just, um, it's a very winter scent for me um, because it's quite deep and quite just warm and cosy and just, oh, I adore it. Uh, wasn't mad. This is hydrating and non-greasy. I wouldn't agree with that. I definitely noticed a grease and a kind of a silicone slip off it. Um, but I've been tearing through hand creams at the moment because with all the hand sanitizer that we're using, the alcohol in it is drying out the hands. So I'm making sure that I'm getting through my, my hand creams. And I'd say this is the first year I've literally torn through hand creams. I mean, I've had other years where I've had the same cream year after year. But this is like the first one this year that's emptied and I definitely went to through at least two or three last year. Now, usually as well, if I'm using this at night, I'll put it on my little footsies as well, just so they're all soft and, and, and smooth as well. I like to keep on top of that so that you're not trying to have a big job of it coming into the summer uh, with hard skin and dry skin. But yeah, I, I do like the smell of this, but I'm not a fan of the, the consistency, so I don't think I'd purchase it again. Um, so I'm on the hunt for a good hand cream. I used to love the one from L'Occitane. Um, beautiful smell, beautiful feel in my hands. Didn't leave your hands greasy, but they're not cruelty free, so I can't purchase them. Um, this is La Cura again. So this is from the, I don't know if you'll be able to see now because it's a glass bottle and lights and everything. Um, this is the Aldi range. This is the Moisture Boost Hydrating Gel Moisturiser. Very gentle scent, not much of a scent to it at all, which I'm happy with because I don't like my face creams to have much of a scent on them. I am more of a gel moisturiser type of person. I used to, no, I thought I used to suffer from very dry skin. I didn't, I suffer from dehydrated skin and I wasn't doing my skincare properly at all. And since I started doing proper skincare, I've definitely noticed a vast difference in my skin. The only time recently that I've had an issue was during when I was using the steroids and that was just because it was messing up my internal body chemistry. Um, so I kind of had to adjust my skincare to allow for it. Um, but this was actually really nice and it's quite affordable. Now, of course, the problem with the likes of Liqueura and, and the Aldi and Middle Ranges is they are a limited edition typically. So they'll come out like once every six months. So unfortunately, you might find something you love and it might be a year before it comes back into their shops, if ever again. And you can take the chance at the time of purchasing a backup, but you don't know really if it's going to suit you or not. So it's kind of, it's a bit of a risk. Um, but if I saw this come back in, it was kind of a pinkish kind of color in the bottle. If I saw this come back in, I would certainly purchase it because of course it's affordable and um, it's under a tenner and it, um, it did exactly what it said. It was a moisture boost, it was hydrating, and it just sank into your skin really quickly. It was one that I would typically use in the morning before my makeup because it sank in quickly, so I didn't have to be waiting around too long to make a start in my makeup. So yeah, I would certainly repurchase that if, if you know it comes back into store. Next up is the Batiste, the creme de la creme, the gold standard for um, dry shampoo in my opinion. Uh, this was the dry shampoo and volume with the plumping collagen wasn't my favorite um i've tried a few of these with ranges if you know what i mean so it's not just your standard dry shampoo there was a volumizing one a conditioning one a shiny one you know all these different types and they just weren't as good in my opinion as just your bog standard batiste dry shampoo um so i wouldn't uh, purchases again for me this was actually more like a texturizing spray um it definitely did give volume but it didn't work as efficiently as a dry shampoo um so I, I just i wouldn't repurchase it even for the volume aspect because it wasn't a pleasant experience with the volume i don't know i just my hair felt dirty i suppose and kind of tacky and that i just i wasn't a huge fan of it um 
but yeah, I've used it up. Um, still on the hunt for a cruelty-free dry shampoo, if you know one that's affordable. I'm tempted to try like Living Proof or Away or one of those kind of ranges, but they're so expensive. I don't know if I can justify it. Um, I don't know. It's something I think about. I might get a travel size of one of them and see, you know, is it as good as people kind of maintain it is. Um, but yeah, that's used up. I have another one on the go in one of my project pens. So, oh, I have another one here actually. It's <laughs> this will tell you now. Although I go through phases. I said this in one of my other videos with dry shampoos because um, medication wise, depending on what kind of medication I'm on, it can affect my hair. So I can either have really greasy hair or hair that will last four or five days without needing to get washed. Um, but when it's greasy, obviously the dry shampoo is a lifesaver. I, I'll show you it first. Um, this is the bare one, I think, isn't it? Yeah, natural and light bare, very gently scented. Yeah, very fresh, very nice. I really like the scent of this one, actually. Um, I will always put my dry shampoo in at night. So if I know the next day I'm not going to be washing my hair and if I feel it's probably going to be greasy, it's starting to, to get greasy or what have you, I will spray this in the night before, zhuzh it in, and um, put my hair up in a top knot and not to bed. I won't brush it out or anything like that till the following morning. Um, and that way I feel that it just soaks up the oils overnight. You're not the next day kind of checking for a white patch. You know yourself when you you know you spray this in and sometimes you might miss a bit at the back of that and you head off out the door and you're a big white patch in the back of your head. Um, when I do it at night, I rarely ever, that never happens to me. Uh, but yeah, this is a lovely scent, natural light bear, very uh, gentle um, but pleasant scent. Uh, so that is one that if they ever decide to go cruelty free and cop onto themselves, I would purchase. It says not tested on animals, but obviously they must be selling in China or something like that. Um, and they don't have the cruelty free bunny, so there's obviously something amiss with them. I'll keep an eye on them because by all means, if they go cruelty free, I just won't bother with anything else because it is the best of them, in my opinion. Um, this is the Laneige uh, Waterbank Quick Hydro Pen. Now, this was kind of sold... Um, I bought this in Sephora in France a couple of years ago and they were kind of saying that it was for hydration on the go. Now I don't know about you but I don't hydrate on the go. Why did I buy this? Why did I buy this? Because I wanted to try something from Laneige, that's why. And I bought the little lip balms at the time as well, you know, the, the overnight treatment masks, I think they are, the little two pack of them. But I was so curious because everyone talks highly about Laneige and you know, the, I presume it's a K product, isn't it? I can't read that. Um, but so what I actually ended up using it, so it has this little silicone kind of applicator on the top. And what I actually did is I used it as an eye cream. Now I'm not a massive eye cream wearer in that I never expect an eye cream to get rid of wrinkles or dark circles or anything like that because I just, in my opinion, don't believe that they work. That's just my opinion from what I have tried, etc. But what I do know is that the more hydrated your under eyes are, the more plump they're going to be and, you know, they're not going to look as uh, dry and therefore things aren't going to look as crepey underneath the eyes. So I use this as a hydration. Now, I have no problem bringing my hyaluronic acid up under my eyes, um, you know, products like that. I'll bring right up under the eyes and use it for that purpose. But while I had this, I used it just under my eyes and it was fine it did that it hydrated underneath uh it's not cruelty free so i couldn't repurchase it anyway but i wouldn't either because it was just a, a gimmicky product it had a little kind of thingy on the bottom that kind of brought the product up um it hasn't even if it was cruelty free it hasn't encouraged me to want to try more of their skincare if that makes sense so in a way i suppose it worked in that that's why i like travel size products and small little tester kind of products because it lets you kind of know whether you're wasting your money or if it would be a good investment to purchase something like this and we're getting down to the end i have the gillette uh shave foam the men's shave foam i rarely if ever buy women's uh, shaving products because they're marked up unnecessarily. Uh, you don't really smell this after use. Ultimately, you don't really you don't smell this after use. I use men's razors. I use men's shaving foam. Works just as well. Uh, won't buy this again because it's not cruelty free. Um, it's been languishing around for a while. I'll be honest with you. I've one more I think in my collection, and I'll just go back to using conditioner. I used to use that before, and it was fine. I just I go through phases where I think, oh, I'm going to try shaving foam because maybe it's totally different. It's not. Conditioner just works just as well. And last but not least, we have a mascara. 
This is from Catrice. Um, I do try out a lot of the Catrice, um, the Catrice and the Essence mascaras. That's the word I was looking for. They're the same company. If you didn't know that, mascara and Essence are actually the same German company, and they, um, therefore, their their products are, are are fairly, you know, similar. Um, this was just okay. I wasn't mad about it. It says it was waterproof. It wasn't. Uh, and the reason I know that is because I very I suffer very badly with uh, allergies and sinus and stuff like that. So I have very watery eyes, and this streamed every it was a disaster. So I'd only use it if I knew for a fact I wasn't going to. Uh, if it was the time of year, like I used it kind of after autumn, because even in autumn I suffer from allergies from the leaves and stuff like that that are falling. The 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 what's the word I'm looking for? It's not must. I don't know, but yeah, they, they cause my eyes to water as well. So I usually only have kind of water-free eyes, kind of November, December, January. That's about the extent of it. So we're into February now, so it's probably going to kick off again once all the, the trees, pollen starts up and stuff like that. Anyway, I divers. Um, wasn't great. Wouldn't recommend it. Um, I used it for like six months. There's probably a bit of product left in it, but it's been over six months now, so I'm not kind of happy to keep going with it. And it wasn't good enough to persevere. Do you know the way some products go, ah, I'll keep going because I love it. No, don't love it enough to keep going. So that is it for the month of January's empties. So I haven't added any project pan products in here because I'm going to kind of do them a month after the fact, if that makes sense, because it's kind of a bit of a spoiler that for what's coming up in the project pan um, videos. So I'll in February, whatever project pan items I've used up in January will be at the end of that video. If that makes sense. Um, I just think I don't know, it's the way I want to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, have you used up many products in January? Have you, you know, did you use up a lot of self-care products maybe because you were trying to, you know, lift yourself a bit after Christmas? Or did you try out some of your Christmas stuff that you might have got, some lotions and potions maybe that somebody got you for Christmas? Um, let me know. Tell me down below in the comments because I'd love to know, you know, what kind of products you got through and what what is your kind of most common product to go through like that you see that I have two dry shampoos in there um, and my Milky Mist is another one that will probably feature a lot in empties um, face masks things like that let me know what's what's your most commonly used product I'd, I'd love to know because I'm always curious to know what people kind of go through more so than I do um, but yeah that's it for today I hope you enjoyed this video I'd love if you'd like and subscribe and stick around for other video other videos even excuse me um, yeah, I'd love it. So take care and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Slaan.